Hello. This presentation will talk about bilinear interpolation. You can find it in the book in section 5.2.1. Uh, the situation is something like the following. We have four points we want to interpolate in a bilinear fashion rather than a linear fashion. So typically we're thinking of we have some curved surface. And sitting on this curved surface are four points, x, y, z, and w. And they make some rectangular patch, which may not be, if it's actually on the surface, it won't be a perfect rectangle, it'll be some curved object sitting there. But we'd like to approximate the surface by using what's known as bilinear interpolation, which means we'll be using linear interpolation twice. So let me draw another picture of this. So I've got points x, y, z, and w which we'll join by straight lines. So these are the straight line segments joining the four vertices. And we're going to approximate a point in the middle of this surface by a function f of alpha beta. And alpha is going to measure direction in this way and will be in the interval 0, 1. And beta is going to measure direction from the bottom to the top. And beta is also going to be in 0, 1. And the formula for f of alpha beta, it's going to be, oh, so I should mention f is a vector value function. x, y, z, and w sit in some space rs for some dimension s. And likewise, the values of f do. And we're going to obtain it by some repeated lerping. We're going to lerp between lerp x, y, alpha lerp w z alpha comma beta. So what does this mean? We're lerping across this way. So we're lerping from x to y by fraction alpha. So that's going across this way and we're going across some fraction alpha. So that gives us this point here. Likewise, we're lerping from w to z by fraction alpha. So we're going from w to z by the same fraction alpha, and that gives us some point there. And then we're lerping from the bottom point to the top point by fraction beta. So that gives us some point there. And this will be the value of f of alpha beta as shown in the picture. So it's a very nice intuitive way to do it, but we can also rewrite this as 1 minus beta. So we're lerping by fraction beta. So that's 1 minus beta times lerp of x, y, alpha. And lerp of x, y, alpha is 1 minus alpha x plus alpha y. And then it's plus beta times lerp of w, z, alpha. So that's 1 minus alpha times w plus alpha times z. So we've just applied the lerping formula three times here. I can rewrite this by regrouping as 1 minus alpha times 1 minus beta plus x plus beta times w plus alpha times 1 minus beta y plus beta times z. It's easy to check that the coefficients of x, y, z, and w are the same in both formulas. And this is now, again, a lerp of lerps. I've got lerp of, I've got a 1 minus alpha times something, and alpha times something, so we're lerping by fraction alpha. The first thing is lerping from x to w by fraction beta, because I'm taking 1 minus beta times x plus beta times w. The second one is we're lerping by fraction beta from y to z. So it's lerp y z beta because we're taking 1 minus, y, 1 minus beta times y plus beta times z. And then finally, comma alpha because we're lerping by fraction alpha from the first thing, 1 minus alpha times it to the second thing, which is alpha times that. So 
you'll notice what's happened here is here in the top formula, we lerped across the bottom and then lerped up and down. Now, with our revised formula, we're lerping up by fraction beta here, right? And that will give us some point about here. We're lerping up by fraction beta here, and that will give us lerp from y to z by beta. And then we're lerping between those two things by straight line by fraction alpha. And lo and behold, we end up at exactly the same point. So we've got a nice symmetry between lerping with alpha and lerping with beta. We can lerp with either one first that we wish to. Uh, so that's the whole theory of this. A few remarks here is, first of all, the set of points f of alpha beta with alpha and beta in the intervals 0, 1, both between 0, 1, it forms a patch. So a patch means a roughly rectangular surface, not necessarily a rectangle, it may not even be flat or planar. In particular, the points x, y, w, and z may not lie in a plane, so this is not planar. But it forms a roughly rectangular shape that's called a patch, and the boundaries of the patch are straight lines. They're line segments. Why? Because when beta equals zero, what you're getting is one minus beta times lerp x y alpha. So when beta equals zero, you're just getting the bottom boundary. When beta equals one, you're just getting the top boundary. When alpha equals zero, you're lerping with beta, and you're getting the boundary on the left. And when alpha equals one, you're getting the boundary on the right. So alpha equals zero on the left, alpha equals one on, on the right. And this lerping just gives you straight line segments. So the boundaries are just the straight line segments between the four vertices on the corners. Furthermore, these cross-sectional pieces are also lines. So the cross-sectional pieces, like the line I drew here in red, it's just a lerping. Once alpha is fixed, you're lerping from the bottom point to the top point. Or when beta is fixed, you're lerping from the left point to the right point along the blue line. So the cross sections are also lines, but the surface itself overall is curved in spite of the fact it's got a lot of line segments embedded in it. So there's a a couple typical applications for this. One application is when you're modeling some surface. Perhaps you're modeling a, a curved path of some type. So you have a curved path, and you just approximate it by a series of rectangles and bilinearly interpolate. So that would be one, one application here. So application one is to approximate some surface, curved, curved surface. In this case, f of alpha beta is a parametric equation for the surface. It's a parametric definition for the surface. In this case, we probably need to know things like normals for f, but for the normals, we can use the cross product method. It's easy to check that the partial of f with respect to alpha is 1 minus beta times y minus x plus beta times, that's y minus x, right, plus beta times z minus w. So direct calculation gives this, and the partial of f with respect to beta is 1 minus alpha times w minus x, that's the, the vector on the left side, plus alpha times z minus y, that's the vector on the right side. And then the normal to the surface at f of alpha beta can be found by cross product. I won't do the calculations of these formulas in the presentation, 
but it's easy to do on your own, and there's an exercise in the book also that asks you to do it. So that's one application. Application number two comes up in texture mapping. And to calculate colors between pixels in a texture map. So between pixel centers in a text in a texture map. So this is a thing that's built into OpenGL and it does for you automatically, in fact. Uh, but I'll talk about this a little more in another presentation. So that's all for this presentation. Thank you very much.